Everybody. Welcome all of you. My name's Roberta Zuckerman. I'm one of the coordinators with Protect South Portland. And on behalf of Protect South Portland and No Toxic Tanks Coalition, I want to welcome everyone for coming today to stand up to toxic em tank emissions. I want to give a special thanks to the IDL Maine Social Aid and Sanctuary Band for bringing joy to our rally today. Today is a testament to the words of Ryan Soko Satoro. Individually, we are one drop, but together we are an ocean. <laughs> um, okay, we are fortunate to have several speakers today. I want to introduce now Rachel Berger, who planted the seed of Protect South Portland eight years ago when she invited a handful of people to meet in her living room. Rachel. So glad to see you all. People coming together resulted in the passing of the Clear Skies Ordinance, which stopped tar sands. It's hard to say. It's how positive change comes about, how we take care of the earth and each other. Today, here and now, is how we continue to fight for clean air. It's not acceptable that 600 tons of volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and 104 tons of ha hazardous air pollutants, HAPS, are being released into the air, being released into the air every year by six tank farms, which together operate 120 tanks very close to where thousands of people live and work in daycares, schools, homes for older people, playing fields, and our green belt where many of us walk and like to ride bikes. People leave, living here should not have to tape up their children's bedroom windows to keep toxic fumes, or have to roll up their car windows on the way to daycare, or have asthma attacks never experienced before moving here, or worry about their unborn children, or the possibility of getting cancer, or simply breathing. The cost of doing business in our community should rightly be that emissions are tested and treated responsibly. This can be done. Given that so many tanks operate so close to where thousands of us live, these toxic emissions pose very serious health risks that must be addressed by the companies and enforced by the DEP. Maine's Department of Environmental Protection. You have all been offered flyers with a little girl doing a painting of the sun, which was designed by my son. On it, you will find instructions about how to contact the Environment and Natural Resources Legislative Committee at the State House, known as the ENR. We hope you will email them before May 3rd hearing on LD1532. We need you to support Representative Victoria Morales's bill, which will have a hearing with the ENR committee on May 3rd. In it, she asks for vent testing, fence line monitoring, and emissions control equipment for all above ground petro petroleum terminal storage tanks in Maine. Let us from this community to the members of the ENR committee supporting Representative Morales's bill will make a positive difference to how the, the committee rules. Thank you for coming. Thank you for caring about the need for clean air and particular in supporting this community. Thank you. Take care.
Our next speaker is Pamela Cragen, known to us as PJ. Uh, PJ lives in South Portland and uh, uh, we'll talk to you about what it's like being impacted by the tank emissions. Oh, it's so heartwarming to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for coming here. Um, we're embedded here next to the tank farm and all I can think about is the generations of children who have gone to this school who have breathed in the hazardous pollutants from these tank farms and now have these some of them are forever chemicals and they are lodged in their organs um, for the rest of their lives um, I hail from the Gulf terminal part of the sacrifice zone um, we breathe in um, benzene, trimethyl, ethyl benzene, hexene, ethyl benzene, toluene, naphthalene. These things cause multiple myeloma, leukemia, kidney damage, liver damage, central nervous system damage, reproductive damage, um, bone cancer, brain cancer, hemolytic an anemia, all kinds of terrible things. Um, unfortunately, my family has been affected by cancer. My sister Kelly was on the payroll of South Portland. She worked at the community center. You may have met her checking, checking into the pool. She was behind the front desk. She had strawberry blonde hair and a wonderful smile. She also worked at the city of South Portland's um, city hall where she was exposed to 10 times the amount of benzene that is allowable in nearby states. Why we allow 10 times the amount of benzene allowed in nearby states is uh, something we should question and I think we should question at the highest levels of government. Um, we've had trouble with the main department of uh, environmental protection. Uh, when Global committed its pollution crimes against us, the main department of environmental protection moved to increase, not decrease, increase the volume of throughput through Global's plant. Um, uh, also, we would like um, the main Department of Environmental Protection to work with us and not against us. We were told when we were at City Hall suffering from all of the uh, symptoms caused by Global and the other terminals here in South Portland that um, our, our, commute, our discussion was redirected to be about odors, nauseous, nuisance odors, and perhaps an increased chance of asthma. Um, this is certainly not the case. What we're facing here is much, much more serious than just a nuisance odor. Um, we're told that because it's only an odor that the, MD, the uh, environmental Department of Environmental Protection is unable to regulate odors. We're not asking them to regulate odors. We're asking them to regulate cancer fumes. Um, <laughs> yes, stop the cancer fumes. That's what this is about. This is about stopping the cancer fumes. Uh, my sister Kelly, uh, she got cancer at age 39. She was still on the payroll of the city of South Portland. Uh, she fought her cancer for seven years. She continued to work the entire time, and she passed at 46. And I, I'm here because, obviously, I just, I can't tolerate it anymore. I can't tolerate knowing that there's, there's kids all over this town, just like, my, just like my family, just like me, like my sister. We went to South Portland High School, like Carmen right next to me. She went to South Portland's high school. We've been exposed to so many cancer fumes over the course of our lives, and then we just find out a few years ago that they are actually cancer fumes. And we're asking for the main DEP to recognize that and treat us like people, that we shouldn't be struggling with, with all of these symptoms and worrying about cancer um, and the cumulative effects. Those tankers that, ta that, that dock at Bug Light, there's no signs even on the fence that says there might be hazardous emissions while you're here. and People are picnicking there with their babies. Triathletes are practicing there. Kites are flying. All the while, these fumes are being emitted from those terminals, and it's, 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 it's a crime. It's a crime against us, honestly. We need to stop the cancer fumes. We're looking forward to our, our honorable representatives and senators to come together. We're looking forward to Governor Janet Mills to look into why the DEP is not working on our behalf, and we look forward to them having a change of mind and coming around and working on be our behalf to stop the cancer fumes in South Portland. Thank you.
um, up until now, I don't know that anybody's addressed this part yet, but up until now, there has been no actual testing of emissions, except for once in 2013 and 2014, which is what led to there being consent decrees against Global and Sprague. Other than that, the tank emissions are self-reported by the oil companies. <laughs> I consider that the fox guarding the hen house. And, um, and they don't measure them or test them. They uh, use a formula uh, provided, uh, created by the American Petroleum Institute, <laughs> uh, which uh, they, you know, they punch in numbers and things. They are not accountable for what numbers they even put in or what information, and they come out with their report. Sometimes they might be above, but Oftentimes, they will be below what is actually being emitted, as was proved with the testing that was actually done, required by the EPA in 2013 and 2012. What we want is definite, clear transparency and accountability for what is being got, pumped into the air that we breathe, or emitted into the air we breathe. And we want the oil industry to take responsibility for the business and that they're doing. That that's what they claim to be good neighbors and we'd like them to show us by testing and giving us the data that they are being good neighbors. And if they're not, then they need to control their emissions. That's basically what this is about. Roberta, as the wind was blowing this way, I felt like I was smelling oil. Yeah. 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 So yeah. maybe a little group no yes. <laughs> I hope you all know about uh, Smell My City, rather. Oops, thank you. It's an app created by uh, the Carnegie Mellon Institute in Pittsburgh. They've got a lot of industry. And uh, you just download it, it's free. And you can, anytime you smell emissions, uh, you, it takes a moment to make a report, describe what you're smelling, and how intense is it. And you can look at the map for each day and see how many people are reporting and whether it's a yellow triangle or a, a green triangle or a red triangle in terms of the, in, the awfulness of it. Bob, maybe you would take a moment to talk about what it's like to live near the tanks. Could you? Thank you, Roberta. Hey, everybody did not expect this at all. It's been a while. Um, it really would be an interesting documentation of a group of us right now if people have the app uh, and it's easy to download. I put it in as a four because I either have a lot of oil in my mask or I'm smelling that. But smell my city. Smell, smell my, my city. city, yes. Um, yeah, I uh, had just started in my climate justice work and I started and I was shopping. I knew I wanted to live in South Portland, had been in an apartment here, but was buying a house. And we were just remarking, it's like these tanks were invisible to me. They're just such a part that, like it was said, it's like they're trees on some level. But once you realize they're here, it's, it's literally frightening to have this be this close to a school. I'm assuming this says inquiry maybe, and this says expo exploration, and that's what really needs to be done with what we're up against with this. And so I live up the hill from Global, and I can smell it regularly coming into my house. Uh, and I understand people have made the choice to close windows, but that's not st stopping it. As PJ said, the summary of everything she said is this is damage. If there's anything we know about petrochemicals, they do serious damage. And I innocently go down the, hall, th down the hill to walk in the cemetery, Evergreen, and to walk my dog and I smell it constantly. It doesn't even matter which way the wind is blowing. It's just, it's unacceptable. We, we're all here today because we know it's unacceptable. And there are more than just us, you know, that, that know that this is unacceptable. And our government leaders should know that it's unacceptable and, and take action on this. So again, it's wonderful on a windy day when we may not notice these smells quite so strongly that we're all here standing together as was said, you know, it's one drop, and then it's, it's even more than that. And we are more than that. 
but it does take us in, in all of our busy lives stepping up to this together and individually to say this is this is truly unacceptable so i am proud to be part of this community and thrilled to be here today and good to see you all uh, my name is Dr. Priscilla Scarry. I'm a licensed naturopathic doctor um, residing on the West End and um, uh, practicing in South Portland. I'm a spokesperson for the Maine Association of Naturopathic Doctors. Um, as you may have found out, we've got 12 different organizations behind this group here in South Portland. Um, doctors of naturopathic medicine, MDs, DOs, nurse practitioners, and other medical practitioners, Anyone who's now studying functional and integrative medicine knows so much more now about how the body works on a cellular level, the biochemical and bioenergetic mechanisms involved. We're finally recognizing now how toxic chemicals in and on the food we eat, the soil that foods come from, the water we drink, and most importantly today in this situation, the air we breathe. More and more studies are showing that citizens exposed to these on a daily basis are at risk for cancer, a weakened function of the human immune system, and in turn are creating the inflammatory process leading to epidemics now confronting humans. The major ones being, right now, obesity, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and now death from COVID-19. Children, because of their faster metabolic rate and, uh, and growth, are especially prone to these damages, which may not show up for decades. We understand the mechanism behind that. It's time we look at all the, syst at the systems we find ourselves beholden to, to the ones that too often put money and profit above the health of our children, our communities, and our planet, and the environment that we all depend on. This is Earth Day week. <laughs> A good expert came and testified beyond, to the CAAC group that the uh, city council put together to study this issue, and he said no amount of benzene should be in the environment at all. I'm going to introduce Representative Victoria Morales, who's sponsor of LD 1532, coming up in the state legislature on tank emissions. Hello, South Portland. Hello, friends. I'm so excited to be here with you all. This is such an important topic. Um, and, you know, when, when we really think about what do we value most, um, it's really fitting that we're here today after Earth Day, right, to talk about the air we breathe. It's as, a, it's as important as the earth we walk on. It's as important as the water that we drink. Yet, yet we feel utterly unprotected here in South Portland. And we are dark, in the dark, about how the air we breathe is protected. And it's not like we haven't tried to shine a light. Protect South Portland and our city has been working at it for years. And we have not been given clear answers. Unfortunately, we have been told that despite what our senses tell us, the intense smells of the VOCs we all experience often, the visual of smoke from the over 100 tanks we all see, and the unseen chemicals, we are told that the VOCs being emitted are safe for us and that we don't need to measure them. This is unacceptable. So what do we do now? We raise up our voices and we demand justice. We demand environmental justice. And what do we say? It's really so simple. We want clean air in our residential communities. We want clean air in our parks. We want clean air at our schools. And we want clean air all around our senior housing buildings and all of our community. So how do we get there? First, we must know if our senses are right. We must know if we have clean air or not, because we don't know. To do that, we must require accurate testing of the VOCs emitted from each tank. My bill, LD 1532, does just that, and I am proud to sponsor it on behalf of our treasured community. We also must have a voice in the matter. When these permits are granted, and when renewals are granted, they don't happen here in our community. And we don't have a voice. We don't feel like we're part of the process. And that's a huge missing link for all of this. So we've got to bring these hearings local and make sure that all of our voices are heard and all of our questions are answered. Yes. 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 We want 100% mitigation. We want 100% mitigation. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's time. 
It's time that we act. Um, we are not seeing action taken our on our behalf, and I'm just really proud to be here with you all, really proud to be working with Protect South Portland and the City of South Portland. So thank you all so much. Well, thank you, Victoria Morales. And uh, now I'd, I am honored to introduce uh, Senator Ann Carney from our state legislature, and she's gonna talk to you. Thank you, Roberta. Hi, everybody. I think I'm the last person, and literally, I think Victoria and I were the last people here. We're sorry we were late. There was a little uh, snafu, but we're delighted to be here. Um, I wanted to say some special thanks to people who have really uh, helped advance the legislative process in this area, including Roberta and Protect South Portland, Tom McCulka, David Falatko, everybody in the community who has been working on this issue. And then also, of course, the Clean Air Advisory Committee who did tremendous work. Um, yeah, a big, I can't clap with the thing. Um, we have all been working hard to make sure that people in South Portland and people throughout our state have clean air to breathe. Um, addressing it on all fronts, Victoria's legislation is very powerful and will be very impactful. I wanna let you know what I've been working on as well. We all received the report from the DEP that came out in uh, late December, early January. And I know that you all, like me, were disappointed in that report. And so I'll be introducing legislation to address the uh, weaknesses, I will say, <laughs> that's a polite term for it, of our current regulatory structure. My notes are gonna blow away. Um, so I've been working with the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, of which I am a member, to uh, introduce legislation that will change the DEP regulations to make sure they provide maximum protection, not just to our community, but to communities throughout Maine. This will include requiring actual testing of emissions on all heated tanks. It will require control technology, not just on the SPRAG, and global tanks, but on tanks throughout the state that are heated, and switching to requiring the best achievable control technology. That's an upgrade that we really need. The uh, regulatory changes will also look at, uh, of course, measuring actual emissions and um, increasing the frequency of testing. Something that I, I think that um, uh, Dr. Skerritt mentioned is that We've all been paying a lot of attention to the heated tanks, but not so much the distillate and gasoline tanks. Those were kind of glossed over in the DEP report, and it's going to be really important to address the emissions, the HAPs that are coming out of those, because they're a major source. And so this legislation will also look at that. Um, we are going to include a review process that requires the legislature, in particular the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, to actually review, modify, and approve what comes out of the regulatory process so that we can again make sure that we're maximizing the protection that's extended to all of us here and to Mainers throughout the state from the uh, emissions from both the heated and the non-heated storage tanks. I, thank, thanks, <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> And, and speaking of exciting, I just wanted to, to pause for a moment, especially on the 51st year plus one of the anniversary of Earth Day. And that is that we are part of this incredible movement that is palpable in the legislature related to protecting our environment. And it goes from, uh, to, into all aspects of the work that we're doing. So a lot of you are probably familiar with the Pine Tree Amendment that has passed out of the Environment Committee and um, that is a major achievement in Maine. We're also making huge advances on solid waste, both with regard to producing less of it by requiring producers of packaging to be responsible for, uh, for recycling that packaging and for uh, manufacturers of drugs to be responsible for taking back unwanted drugs so that they don't end up in our water and in our landfills. 
Uh, it even includes really nerdy things like extending the statute of limitations on PFAS so that as we discover wells throughout our state that have been contaminated by PFAS, that landowners and the state have the ability legally to go after the manufacturers of those really harmful chemicals. Um, and then, yeah. And then I'll just end on one note that I think is really important for us all to, to hold dear is that in addition, we're incorporating into our statutes language that inserts environmental justice as one of the elements that are going to be considered in permitting and approval processes. And that really uh, ties the work that we are doing in the legislature directly to the communities that are going to be impacted by our decisions with regard to everything from solid waste to air quality to um, environmental justice. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.